and welcome to the Horseflow Podcast. My name is Ray, founder of Horseflow Academy and author of the book, Communicate with Your Horse. Today we are discussing empathy. More importantly, finding empathy and finding empathy with your horse. So empathy is the ability to perceive the world from another being's perspective. So empathy goes hand in hand with another term that I like to use, which is called Umwelt. Umwelt is defined as the world as it is perceived by a particular organism. So this is the way that you perceive the world, the sensations that you experience from the world, and the same goes for the horse. So the way that the horse hears things, sees things, and feels things. So the reason why Umwelt is a part of this, because you cannot perceive the world from the horse's perspective if you don't understand how your horse perceives the world. Now, empathy to me is probably the most important principle for achieving effective communication with an animal or person, or more importantly, with your horse. So if you apply empathy, or you find empathy with your horse, more importantly, then you're able to achieve effective communication. Yes, there are a lot of other elements involved, but with empathy, you can achieve a hell of a lot. So finding empathy is the ability of your nervous system or the nervous system of either you or your horse affecting either you or your horse. So the nervous system of one being affecting the nervous system of another being. That is when you find empathy. So when you are stressed, you are causing your horse to become more stressed. Or when your horse is calm, he's causing you to be more calm or vice versa. So it's really important to achieve effective communication um, if you want to achieve new learning with your horse, uh, teaching them new skills or knowledge, and or achieving higher levels of performance and or just even a better relationship with your horse. So when we find empathy, it is our responsibility to optimize or to optimally utilize that empathy in our or and our horse's advantage. So there are two main circuits in the brain involved with empathy, and this is the prefrontal cortex and the insula. The prefrontal cortex is that big frontal lobe in the human brain, which is much larger and much more developed um, in comparison to weight ratio than any other mammal that exists. So this is our privilege or our advantage as human beings, sometimes our disadvantage. Um, but it's our responsibility because we've got, our, we've got the ability to reason. And this means that we can reframe things. So we are able to frame and reframe the way we feel and perceive things. Horses are reactive animals and they respond to the stimulus in their environment. And horses never lie. They are 100% transparent and they express what they experience. So we, as humans, we are a little bit different. We always have our own personal agendas or intentions, and this is a, one of our biggest downfalls as a human species. And horses pick up on this better than probably any other animal because they are so reactive that they just express whatever they experience, like I mentioned. So when you are not a thorough being around your horse, yeah, your horses often reflect that behavior. And um, this is why there's sayings in the horsemanship world, like you are, your horse is a reflection of your soul and things like that. Um, so it's really important that um, we utilize our prefrontal cortex in the right way. So our prefrontal cortex is responsible for reasoning um, or higher cognitive function. So that's the one circuit in our brain involved with the empathy. And another circuit is the insula. Insula is basically a older part or a more primitive part of the brain. So it's imagine your brain in layers and the most developed and advanced layer in a sense is the prefrontal cortex, the outer layer. And now you've got one layer down, you've got your insula. And um, the insula is responsible for perceiving and experiences of the internal and the external state of the body or experiences of the ex internal state of the body and then experiences of external stimulus from the body. So these two terms that I'm going to name now is the insider's main job, which is interoception, 
the the inner feelings and sensations of the body, so emotions and um, feeling angry or um, so those kind of emotions and also um, feeling stressed and every other emotion related to that. And extraception is the sensation on your skin or um, sensation from the, your senses coming from the external environment. So this is the two main circuits involved with empathy. Now, these two circuits are a part of the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system consists out of two main branches. And these two main branches most people are familiar with. And we're going to simplify them really, really well down to the bone. So these two branches of the autonomic nervous system is the parasympathetic and then the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. So the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system is calm, relaxation, satisfaction, those kind of emotions and sensations. And then on the sympathetic side of, on the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system, you've got stress, arousal, anxiety, anger, those kind of emotions. So when we, when we use the following analogy, um, this whole, whole thing about finding empathy becomes really simple and it takes away a little bit of the fluffy stuff. So imagine a old school seesaw. On the one side of the seesaw, you've got parasympathetic branch. And on the other side of the seesaw, you've got your sympathetic branch, the stress arousal side. And the hinge on which the seesaw is hinging can be either um, tightened or loosened in a sense of um, the friction. So it can either go from calm to arouse quicker with less friction or motivation and or with more friction um, or motivation to achieve uh, a more aroused state or less aroused state of consciousness. So the reason why I mentioned that, because that hinge is basically the human's, human brain, the prefrontal cortex, your ability to reframe things and to allow your nervous system to adjust more easy or less easy. So when you adjust your nervous system, remember it's reflecting in your horse and your horse's nervous system is going to be influenced and impacted by your nervous system when you achieve or find empathy with your horse. So you want to be able to regulate your horse's nervous system to an optimal state for learning or an optimal state for performance or an optimal state of relaxation when you want to just communicate or just relax with your horse in the stable or in the field or whatever it is you'd like to do. But when you want to teach your horse new skills, there is certain requirements of the nervous system to be in an optimal state. When you want to achieve optimal performance and utilize the available knowledge and skills that your horse already owns, then you need to achieve a more aroused level of consciousness. So the sympathetic branch needs to be elevated a little bit more than on um, an average learning day or relaxation day. So that's the whole purpose of finding empathy. So it's really important, again, that we understand the horse's umwelt. So if you understand your horse's umwelt and you understand how they perceive the world and the, how they experience the sensations and stimulus in the environment, then you are able to apply empathy to experience the world from their perspective. And then you can regulate their nervous system to the optimal state to achieve what it is you desire. So in a nutshell, that is what we're trying to achieve when we find empathy with our horses. And the reason why finding empathy is an extremely important principle for effective communication with our horses. If you have any further questions, please shoot them down in the comment section um, and on any of the platforms that you are listening. And um, most importantly, if you leave comments um, or questions down on the comments section on YouTube um, or send direct messages on Instagram, it's going to be the most effective way where I can reply and try and answer your questions um, in as much detail and depth as possible so that we can help you help your horse. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any further suggestions or questions you'd like me to answer during following episodes or in any videos that I can shoot to try and explain any of these things in more depth and detail, please, again, leave it down in the comment section. And then also, if you have any guests, suggestions for the podcast, please shoot them through as well. Thank you very much for your interest, time and effort.
throughout the following episodes, we're going to become a little bit more practical and we will talk a bit more about the physical principles for effective communication, things that you can apply in your every single day training and things that are essential to achieve the best possible and the most rapid responses and achievements from your horse. So, yeah, maybe just a quick brief note on those things. It's going to be uh, discussions in regards to active and passive body language and the importance of release throughout training or communication with your horse and then allowing your horse to rest and digest. Those following three principles I've described in most depth and detail in my book, Communicate With Your Horse. Um, So if you want to find that, that's available on Amazon and you can really understand that a little bit better by more um, in-depth explanations. But yeah, those be, those those will be the following principles that I discuss on this podcast with you. And then from there on forward, it's going to become a little bit more about strategy and other tools and education methods that you can utilize to achieve the best possible results and achieve your goals with your horse and or solve any kind of problem with your horse. And after those principles, um, the, the strategies and methods is all going to be building up from a very good and a solid foundation, both on the ground and under saddle. And once you've achieved that, you can establish a further career with your horse in any direction you wish or desire. So thank you very much for your time listening again. And I hope you find value out of these discussions. And I hope we can build a relationship forward to help you achieve your goals with your horse. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good day. Thank you.